So today we're going to learn about Cartesian vectors. I'll describe in a second what it is. But so far, we've been working with geometric vectors, where you just draw arrows on a sheet of paper and you do something with them. For example, what we did already was we took two and we added them together. So tail to head, tail to the head. So imagine adding these two vectors and you end up getting a new vector. So this is your new vector. That's your resultant vector. Or uh, we could take another and we could, uh, for example, Taylor multiply. For example, if I took this vector and multiply by 2, I end up with a vector which double the length, but it's still going in the same direction. So vectors can be represented as a picture form, but also can be represented in a numerical form, which we call Cartesian vectors. So over here, um, we're going to learn something about called the position vector. So position vector pretty much is tells you a specific starting point of the beginning of the vector. For example, here, O or 0 is considered the origin. So anytime you see a vector with a O or 0, pretty much you start the vector right at the 0, 0 point. And the end of point P is wherever that dot is. So for example, I'll just make one over here, over here. So in this case, my point P would be 6 and then 4. So the how we would label this vector OP in this particular example is is going to be 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Sort of like, it's, it's very, it, it's exactly identical to plotting dots. Okay? And what type of numbers can A and P be? They can be just any real number. Any real number. So here we have some standard unit vectors. So, you, well, I think we talked about in the past where unit vectors are pretty much have a magnitude of 1. So down here in the left-hand corner, you can see that the unit j, all right, and the unit, sorry, unit vector i. Okay, so 1, 0, and 0, 1. Now the thing is, you want to somehow connect these two vectors and make it um, end up with a resultant vector of this vector here, op. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to have to somehow do, do some adding or subtracting or make it this, these vectors longer and such that we can get this final vector. Because if I just add these two vectors together, for example, all right, I'm not going to get this entire resultant vector. So what we're going to do is we're going to do add these vectors. And but before we add the vectors, we're going to have to do something called scalar multiplication. So basically, we're going to take these vectors and multiply it by a certain length. In this case, the coordinates here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. OP, OP is equals to 7 and 8. That's the vector. Now the thing is, what do we have to do with this? Well, we're going to take the bottom vector, the I unit vector, and we're going to do a scalar multiply of 7, because we want to go to 7. So basically, I took and scalar multiplied. Here's 7I. All right, and this one I would have to multiply by, that's right, it's going to be 8. So this vector is called 8j, okay? What we're going to do with these two vectors is we're going to add them, because as before, we can add vectors by connecting the tail to head to the tail to head, and if you notice, we end up getting the final vector. So op is equals to 7i plus 8j. This format is called the standard unit vector form, okay? Whereby a resultant vector is created by a combination, adding, subtracting, or scalar multiplication of unit vectors. So we can express a vector as a picture, okay? So we can express as a standard unit vector form but also we can express it as a component form, which pretty much is breaking it up into x, y type form, so 5 and 6. So this is a component form, where you can see the x and the y form. If I were to draw this vector, in this particular vector, sorry, negative 5, so you move negative 5 to the left and then 6 up, all right, this is my vector. It's not exactly straight, but oh well, O, P. And this means what? This means the, you want to find the length of this. And what you're going to do is, everything is related to grade 9 math. Uh, here's negative 5 and here is 6. So pretty much you have a, yes, that's right. You have a right angle triangle and you're going to be using, yes, Pythagorean theorem. So you're going to be using Pythagorean theorem to solve for this. 
In other words, to find OP, you're going to take the square root of the components, the components, which is negative 5 squared plus 6 squared. So we want to generalize this. Any vector can be represented as, in general form, AI plus B times the unit vector. And what we're going to do is find the value of OP. All we have to do is take, to find the magnitude of OP, all you have to do is just take the scalar multiples and use it in the Pythagorean theorem. So here we have an example where we have two vectors, I shifted it a bit. We have O and then we have P and then Q. So I have to ask you what is the component form for OP? You just sort of read the coordinates. Let's just say it's negative 4 and 3 and this is going to be example 3 and 4, for example, 3 and 4. All right, so if I want to express OP as a unit vector, so OP, we can call, I'll just put the answer up here, it'd be negative 4i plus 3j. Make sure you put those arrows there. This is 3i plus 4j. Okay, with the arrows up here. And over here, I want you to actually find me a new vector. Well, this new vector says, all right, I'm going to add OP plus OQ. So I can actually take these two vectors. So here's OP. I'll take this and add it onto the tail of the head. I, and I end up getting a new vector. And this new vector is going to be, let's do this one over somewhere over here. So that's my resultant vector. Not exactly the greatest, but so I'll call it OR. Now, according to this picture, just by looking at this new vector, all right, the, co the components would be, well, one to the left and maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So it would be negative one and seven. That's just by drawing a picture, but we have a faster way to do this. What we can do is we take the vectors and physically, numerically, just add them together. For example, negative four and three plus three and four, and that would give us you add the x components, you add the y components, and you end up getting negative 1 and 7. So this is a lot faster way. Or if you wanted to, you can actually take these two vectors and vector 4, so negative 4i plus 3j, and add it onto the other vector, which is 3i plus 4j, and sort of like, you know, terms, you group all the like vectors together because you can graph, so you can um, bring them together, and you end up pretty much it's not the greatest, but negative 1i plus 7j, which is the same thing as negative 1 and 7. So right now we're going to generalize. So as you can see, it's not specific numbers. So I want you to pause this and see whether you can figure this out on your own. So spend like a minute or two minutes. And in the next slide, um, when you unpause it, you will see the final answer. So you can see here, I actually re-express this as a standard unit vector form, depending on the scalar multiples. And if you notice here, when I added the vectors, so I just add them up, and then over here, I'm not going to call it collecting like terms. I'm going to call it collecting similar vectors, because these two vectors are similar, in the sense that they are going in the same direction. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do factor up the i vector, all right, and I end up with a plus c, and then plus, in this case, I'll factor out the j vector, and I end up getting b plus d, and at the end, I end up getting the component form, which is bracket a plus c, comma, b plus d.